Okay, I, I, um, I guess we might as well just start because it looks like everyone's pretty much here. Um, so uh, my name is Glenn Weil, and uh, you can call me Glenn. You can call me Professor Weil. You can call me any nickname you come up with for me. Um, or if you can't come up with one, I can supply some. Um, and the point of you calling me whatever you feel like calling me is that we're in this class, I hope, going to respect ideas rather than titles, and that you guys will aspire to be my colleagues, not just my students. Um, and part of that is if I mess up, you should correct me. If you disagree with something I say, you should jump in. Um, this class is called Elements of Economics, uh, Economic Analysis 2, uh, or Econ uh, 2011 uh, 0, 20110. Uh, the, it's the second quarter of intermediate microeconomics, and it pre-requires Econ 210, which I'm not sure existed last year. So you might have just taken Econ 200 Honors, or I mean, a Turbo or something like that. Um, it also requires that you guys have a year of calculus, which we will use in this class. It's an Honors section, and it's going to cover the behavior of competitive and monopolistic firms market equilibrium and externalities, economic policy, in particular regulatory competition policy, and other areas of public policy like redistributive taxation. And the main goal of the course is going to be to try to give you a sense of what it's like to be an economist. Um, during the first lecture, I'm going to discuss some logistics of the course, uh, the reading that I asked you to do for today, and an outline of what's to come in the course. Okay. So the course basically is going to try to do two things. It's going to try to give you a flavor of what it's like to be an economist. What sorts of questions do economists think about or have to think about for our profession? Um, public policy questions are some of the most important things that economists are asked to advise on. And I'm going to try to give you a sense of examples of those types of policy questions and how in practice, in my job, I actually go about analyzing those questions. Uh, drawn from uh, a range of different policy issues that I've been involved in or that uh, interest me. Um, and the w course is going to try to get you to be able to generate your own analyses and to draw your own conclusions about these types of questions. Um, and I'll try to give you a sense of how economists look distinctively at these types of policy questions as opposed to how any uh, untrained member of the public might or how and you know, people from other academic fields might do. Um, and that will try to teach you how to employ economics to solve uh, social uh, problems if you ever work for a government, um, or even if you work in a private sector firm, how to understand the social implications of the decisions that your, your firm is making. Um, I'll also try to teach you some of the tools that you'll need uh, to become an effective economist both mathematical tools and the ability to use information or data from the real world to bear on questions of economic policy. OK, so um, I don't know how many of you guys have gotten win, but apparently this course has a bit of a reputation. Uh, it's going to be a bit different from other courses that you've taken or maybe will take. Uh, first of all, I'm going to cold call on people starting in lecture today. Um, this is not to embarrass you, uh, but I do want to know if people are understanding what's going on in the course because it helps me get feedback. And I also want to give credit to people for being prepared for class because um, unlike most economics classes that you've taken perhaps, a lot in this course is going to be about reading and comprehension and thinking through economic ideas rather than just being able to solve mathematical problems. So please do the reading before class. Um, second, I will force you in this course to learn some of the concepts by exploration, reading, and things that interact uh, outside of class and inside of class. So uh, probably the most common comment that I got uh, from students last year was that they felt that the problem sets were not sufficiently closely related to the material covered in class. And there is a reason for that. Um, it is by design. I'm trying to, in class, teach you some principles and get you to 
you know, start thinking about how you do economic analyses of things that are related to the types of questions that get asked, asked on the problem set. But I really don't think you learn anything in the class if you're not able to go beyond exactly what you've already seen and think about uh, how you would use those principles uh, to think about things in the real world. If you sort of think that here is, um, you know, what you learn in class, you know, here is the typical problem set, here is what I'm going to ask you to do on your problem sets, and like here are the real questions you're going to be asked uh, to answer if you're ever at a company, um, then maybe you'll get a sense for why I'm trying to get you to do the sorts of things that I'm trying to get you to do, which will be tough, uh, but hopefully rewarding in this course. You know, the truth is any job you get, whether it's an investment bank, at a government, uh, you know, whatever, is never going to say, here's a utility function, uh, derive the demand function that corresponds to this utility function, and, you know, tell me what the profit maximizing price would be against that firm, which is already sort of beyond what you're usually asked to do in standard problem sets, right? So, I mean, the, uh, what, what, you know, you'll be asked to do a little bit more of in this class is, here's a real world problem, here's how you might use something from economics to think about that problem, um, you know, try to generate some sort of an analysis. My hope is that will give you a sense of how you might actually use the tools that you've been learning so far and you'll continue to learn here at the University of Chicago to think about uh, problems that will actually be useful to you uh, in life. Um, okay, so um, I hope that you'll engage with rather than just solving the problem sets. The problem sets are going to be more open-ended and harder than problem sets that you're probably used to in the past and they're probably going to be a larger part of your grade. They will also have a little bit of a different structure than the problem sets that you might be used to, and I'll talk a little bit more about this below. Um, my guess, this was definitely true last year, and as I'll talk about in a bit, I've made some adjustments this year, is that the scores that you're going to get on evaluations, problem sets, and exams in this class will probably be the lowest scores that you'll get on any problem sets or evaluations in your time at Chicago. However, that does not mean that the grade that you will get in this class will be the lowest grade you will get at Chicago. In fact, um, I think if you talk to the people who took the class last year, they'll tell you that the distribution of grades that people got coming out of this class was probably about 20% more generous than uh, the standard uh, 200 sequence course. It's just that things got way, 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 way curved. So, <laughs> so do not freak out if you say get 30% on some assignment, that does not mean that you failed. There will be a distribution posted by the teaching assistant that will, uh, I don't think Hans is here, is he? No. Anyways, you'll meet Hans, the teaching assistant, and uh, he will uh, tell you about the distribution on any particular assignment and worry if you're like way, way <coughs> below where everyone else is, but don't worry if you're struggling like everyone else is. Okay. Um, and I really do want you to come to my office hours, and so does Hansa, uh, because I really like talking to you guys and trying to get you guys to think about economics. I make this course challenging and difficult, not because I'm trying to punish you, but because I'm really trying to get you interested in economics and to push the limits of what you can use economics to do. So I, I really hope you'll, you'll engage with the course. Okay, the course website's on chalk, as you guys probably know. There's also some more stuff available on my website, uh, glenwild.com slash teaching.htm. Uh, required um, readings and additional references are both included on the syllabus. Um, I think people were intimidated by the number of additional references last year, and so I've made that reading list much shorter. If you want to go more into depth, the first place to go is to um, the first place to go is uh, to the syllabus for the sister course of this course, which is Econ 242 slash 40501. Um, let me just write myself a note about something. Um, um, and then if that's not enough for you and you want to read more, uh, I had an enormous, you know, 20-page document of extended readings, and if anyone feels like 
uh, looking at that, they're very welcome to. Um, uh, the textbook for the course is Intermediate Microeconomics by Varian, 8th edition. This, you know, a number of the readings come out of this. Um, it's not really my favorite textbook in the world. Uh, and you'll see that the style of what I talked about in lecture has some tangential relationship to it, but is as much critical of what Varian is saying as it is expositing what Varian is saying. Um, so, you know, a lot will come out of lectures uh, and the other readings. Um, so the, uh, all of the readings will be on the website. Some of the references will be on reserve at the Reg rather than, um, rather than being on the website because those are not required readings. You can reach me at my email, which is given here, or my phone number. Uh, my office hours, which should have an H in front of it, um, are on Wednesday from 4 to 6 uh, in Rosenwald 205B, which is my office. Um, and if you can't make those, I'm happy to set up a time to meet with you guys separately. The section leader is Hansa Zong, whose information is here. Uh, section is a from 6 to 7 on Thursdays in Cobb 106. And his office hours are two different times because he's teaching two different classes, but you can come to either of his office hours. So Wednesdays 6 to 7 or Thursdays 5 to 6 in Stewart Cafeteria. Okay. He's going to cover mostly math because um, I will do some math in class, but probably not as much as you're used to getting, especially in a turbo section of an economics class. So he'll do some more of that. And I'll also go over the problem sets. Okay, so there's going to be six problem sets, a midterm and a final. The midterm is in class on Thursday, November 1st. And you have to take the midterm, so if you can't make that class, you should let us know. Uh, the final will be scheduled by the administration as usual and will take three hours. Exams are open everything, including the internet, including any computational software you want to use, everything. But you can't communicate with anyone. And we'll be looking at computers to make sure people aren't sending messages. Um, bring a calculator or Mathematica to the exams to do computations. All problem sets are due at the beginning of a, a lecture. And which lecture they're due on is written on the top of the problem sets. They'll be up on chalk. Uh, the first one is due a week from Thursday. Uh, no extensions will be granted on problem sets. Um, and problem sets are going to be long and hard, as I mentioned. Um, so you're not expected to complete everything. Um, participation will be 10% of the grade. Um, and uh, that includes uh, coming to section and cold calls during lectures. I don't think Hansa will be too strict on, on coming to session, and he won't cold call, most likely. But, uh, but you can check with him on his policy with regards to that. Um, OK. So last year I taught this course. And as I said, you guys may have heard about it. It was very hard because it demanded creativity. I want to maintain this, but I also want to make it a little bit more manageable this year for people. So I'm going to use the following structure in the evaluations for this class. So in problem sets, the answers will be you can get the answers independently, but um, they're going to be very related to the solutions to previous problem sets from last year, the answers to which I've posted online. So what that means is if you think it's too challenging to try to generate the answers to the problem sets on your own, then you can draw on these previous problem sets, and hopefully that will get you a fair bit of the way to being able to answer the questions. Um, I will also sometimes include questions that are based off, rather than last year's problem sets and exams, the questions from 242-40501, which they're going to be a few days ahead of you. So they will usually complete a problem set on the material before uh, your problem set uh, is due, and therefore you can look at their solutions. So the idea here is rather than having to completely from whole cloth generate these solutions, which I think people found extremely challenging last year, you can instead sort of be guided in how to think about them by the solutions to the last year's problem sets. So you'll more be asked to comprehend and digest the solutions.